Hello and welcome everyone to the third video in this series of videos which looks at completing the Level 2 Essential Skills Wales ICT qualification. Now in the last video I left you at this point where you were setting up and completing the Activity 1 search log to be used for the spreadsheet. So what you need to make sure is that you've got your name in the header and possibly, it's not vital, um, but you could put it in there, the title of the document. So what you were finding was you were going onto the internet, you were performing searches, locating websites and finding particular models of, in your case, furniture, but in my case the example was electrical items for the kitchen. You also then made a comment on the reliability of the information, basically depending on where you got it from, and the copyright information. So what we need to do now is transfer these particular pieces of information into a spreadsheet. Now, there's two ways you could do this. The easiest way is to take all the information from here, because it's already there and it's easy to see. Or you could take the price information and the website information from your screenshots. But it's probably easier to do it using your search log. So what I'm going to do now is show you two examples, and these are both in the shared area. So in the folder, this is actually on my USB device at the moment, but in the Level 2 Essential Skills Wales ICT folder, which is on the Pupil Shared area, there's Activity 1, and inside there is the Spreadsheet folder. And you can see there's two exemplar spreadsheets there, so if you need to look at those, by all means do so. So what we're going to do now, and this, in this video we're simply looking at actually transferring the information into the spreadsheet. So ultimately it should look something like this. You should have a heading for model, for the shop or the website where you got it from, it's up to you, and the price. Also it's quite nice to have an extra little heading in there. And ultimately it will be formatted to show all of these separate tables here. And then at the end we're going to calculate the overall cost. And we're going to be doing that using formulas, but I'll cover that, or functions I should say, and I'll be covering that in a later video. So then, for now, what we need to do is actually create a draft, an unformatted draft. So if I go into the spreadsheet checklist, which you can put your name in there. What I've got here is I need to create an unformatted spreadsheet with no... Um, symbols could be in this case pound sign, percentage symbols, anything like that on the numbers. No colors, no borders, no formatted text, so bold, underlined, or italics, nothing. Just literally bare basic numbers and text. So I'll show you the examples again. This is the one example, how it's laid out. And the other example is in spreadsheet one. And it looks something like this. So as long as it's organized, Okay, we can actually create the basis of the spreadsheet first and then we can go into actually formatting the spreadsheet so that it looks something like this. So then, what we're going to do, I'm going to create a new spreadsheet here. I didn't realize I was using Excel 2007. Not a problem, it's not massively different. So what I'm going to do then is, I'll tell you what, I will open Excel 2010 just to show you. So here I have a blank Excel workbook if it will let me actually open it there we go so I've got a blank Excel workbook so the best thing to do and this is the case in Windows 7 like I showed you before if you drag that to the left hand side or the right hand side it'll actually snap into position there we are and I can also do this with my search log like so so what I'm going to do now is move over to the part that I need and I'm going to say okay in cell um, I'll start down here because I want to leave some room for a title up here so I'm going to say in B6 so in cell B6 I know it's B6 because it tells me in the top left I am going to type in washing machines like that and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in model shop and price now my problem here is you can see that washing machine looks like it's overlapped into two cells it hasn't because if I click in that cell you can see that it's blank however I need to stretch this so that it fits perfectly to that piece of text so I'm going to stretch the column we know it's a column because 
goes down and I'm going to hover over that particular part in between B and C click and drag I can drag it as far as I want or if I want it to be perfect I just double click and it fits it for me so the next thing I'm going to do now is start actually transferring these over so the model of washing machine I'm looking at first is a Hoover DYN 8144D the shop that it comes from I just look there and it says curries nice and easy and I've got reverse caps on curries there we go and the price is 229 so then I'm going to go to the next one and the next one is I've never known how to say that I'm going to say Beko but I don't know it could be Beko I suppose um, WMB 71642S 71642 S and that's from Argos and the price is $309.99 then I'm going to go into the next one, which is Hot Point Ultima, and it's WMUD 942G. So again, this has come over too far. It's into the next cell, so I need to stretch that out. So I'll just double click. Perfect. In there, I've got 359.99. So what I would need to do now is actually continue to do that I, and remember I could put this in anywhere I could start putting their microwaves down there again with the capitals I always do that microwaves or I could put microwaves over here I could put it anywhere really it doesn't really matter but as long as you lay it out so that it's nice and easy to read okay so you need to continue doing that for all of them the other bit that you need to do as well, if I go down here, is I'm going to choose the final appliances. So I'm going to get rid of that there. And appliances are chosen. Then under here, okay, I would have the model shop so that I know where to get it from and the price. And then I just literally go through my three sections. So I could have kettles over there. And then I would be able to choose, I say, right, okay, well, I'm going to have that particular washing machine, this particular microwave, and this particular kettle. And then I list those down there, put the corresponding shop and the corresponding price. And it's as simple as that. So, what I would say is that we will need to use functions and formulas, and we will need to work out a total. So I could put total in there, total cost, or total furniture cost, just to be more specific. And then I would put the price in there. And we will be using formulas, but I'll go over that for you in the next video. So for now, transfer all of your information. Remember, you must have headings for your information, otherwise we won't know what it's all about. And it's good to put an extra heading in if you've got separate things. So say if you had sofas, you could change that to sofas. Okay, you could change that to desks. You could change that to, ooh, I don't know. One of the other things was chairs. So make the spreadsheet in that way. It's nice and easy, nothing too difficult. Remember, if it overlaps onto another cell, you just click and drag it out or double click to fit it perfectly. So just as a very quick summary to end the video then, remember that you must create a basic unformatted spreadsheet using Microsoft Excel, which means that there should be no pound sign symbols um, used next to any of the numbers. Put them in as a basic raw number. Remember to stretch out the cells so that your information is clearly shown and there's nothing being hidden behind another cell. That's important too. And remember to consult your uh, search log when you're actually creating the spreadsheet because the whole point of it is that you're creating an accurate spreadsheet to show your head of year. So it's no good doing the research and then putting in random numbers that you've made up from the t off the top of your head. And the examiner and your teacher will be looking at this. Um, Please remember that the example that I'm using in the video is different to the one that you're going to be doing on your assignment brief. It's essentially the same, however, you just need to make sure that you're doing it for um, sixth form or you know office furniture rather than kitchen appliances. The layouts that I've shown you are just as a basic guide. You can actually use your own particular design example. That's absolutely fine. We encourage you to do that. It's just to show you as a basic way how to do it. 
Now, the other thing is make sure that you consult the assignment brief if you're unsure what you need to do. You also need to consult your checklist if you're unsure of any of the skills or any of the things that you're being assessed on. And failing that, make sure that you consult with your teacher. And